For the past week, I've been using a new laptop from Asus. And this particular laptop, I would say, is one of the end game laptops when it comes to computers for creatives. Of course, that depends on how much digital work you do. But while this is not a full review, I will do something like that later on. In this video, join me as I explore the implications of this laptop for photo editing. And of course, I am talking about the ASUS ProArt Studio Book 16. Now, if you're not new to the channel and you've been watching my videos for the past year or so, then you would not be a stranger to the ASUS Pro Art lineup. Of course, a little over a year ago, I reviewed this monitor, the Pro Art 248 QV, which is an entry level professional grade color accurate monitor from ASUS. And of course, you would know that the Pro Art line are devices created specifically for the needs of digital creatives. That means photographers, videographers, designers, graphic artists, architects, and everything around and in between all of those. And of course, raising the flag of that lineup are the ProArt StudioBook laptops. Now, this is the new ProArt StudioBook 16, and let me tell you about it. This in particular is the ProArt StudioBook 16 H7600H. This packs an 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor, a one terabyte SSD, 32 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA RTX 3060 laptop GPU. Of course, this also has graphics acceleration with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX Studio. Of course, this comes with a 16 inch 4K OLED display that is Pantone validated for color accuracy. It also features a very intuitive trackpad that is also pen compatible with the Asus Pen so that you can use it as a graphic tablet on its own. And of course, one of my favorites about this laptop is the all new Asus dial. Now before we proceed with editing, let's check out how to set up the dial and also check out the application called the ProArt Creator Hub. Of course, this application actually is a dashboard for the entire laptop. Now it's showing me the percentage of how much I'm using the power of the laptop, the current temperature, and the frequency of use. And I can actually switch this over to different modes of usage. And I'm actually just using standard mode. Imagine that. I am i don't think I will be maxing out the power of this laptop, at least for this particular editing session. So I'm not going to change that into anything else. Of course, it also has its own way of calibration, but it also requires, of course, a recommended calibration tool. It also has these features for adding some task groups to make your workflow more efficient, as well as, of course, the control settings. Basically, here you have two different sides. One is for common functions, and the other one is for any dedicated apps that you might want to use with the dial. And the common functions we see right here are volume and system brightness. While on the other side for Photoshop, we have zooming in and out. We have brush sizes, brush groups, brush smoothing, opacity, layer opacity. And we can switch this over to Lightroom Classic, After Effects, or even Premiere Pro. And I believe we can also add a lot more applications to this one. I will have to check whatever else I use that is also compatible with this. And what I love about this is the dial is actually already set to control almost everything I use on the main panel, which means all the necessary global processing that I would use for exposure, for contrast, and also the specific sliders for shadows, whites, highlights, and even saturation and vibrance. And of course, you can add so much more to this. And of course, I've already set this up as I've been using this computer for the past week. And these are basically everything I'm going to need when we move on later to editing in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Okay, so let's head on over to Lightroom. And this is a shot I took last week and when we were out camping at Mount Gulugod Baboy in Batangas. And 
I really like this image because there were really fast moving clouds that were at first worrying us because we thought that the sky might be entirely covered. But the clouds were moving so fast that they actually create some very nice cutting patterns in the back that also added depth to the shot. Even if parts of the night sky were actually occluded, it added a bit more layers into the entire shot. And of course, I really like this tree. Now, whenever you see me using the dial, you will see this, which is basically the entire menu of the dial. And you can see that it can be for system volume, system brightness, so that means the brightness of the screen, and as well as, of course, the settings for Lightroom specifically. And when I press the button, you can actually start making the changes. What I can see here is that the changes are so precise to the point that they are at two decimal points. So imagine increasing the exposure by 0 0.01. It, you, you barely even see the difference. And of course, when you make bigger movements, then you also make bigger changes. Whenever I shoot Milky Way or the night sky in particular, I want to make sure that my white balance is actually giving off the right tones so that it doesn't really overpower the sky. But at the same time, we get that, you know, that brilliance we get from the core of the Milky Way. Of course, this isn't the best um, visibility or vibrance that we get from the Milky Way, but let's see how much we can enhance that. So let me go all the way here to temperature and I want to see how making it a bit cooler would make. Now you can see that this is actually adjusting very precisely. So there's, there's a lot of movement to be made when it comes to adjusting the temperature. Now my trick for post-processing images of the night sky without really abusing your raw file, meaning without really bringing out too much noise, is that I almost never touch the shadow slider, I almost never touch the black slider, and I concentrate on the highlights and the whites. Because in instances like these, making adjustments to those actually make a world of difference. Check this out. See? So even without increasing contrast or increasing dehaze, for example, or clarity, for example, you really get those stars popping out. And you can also check what adjustments on highlights would do. So I would actually want to pull down the highlights because I don't want the highlights of the foreground overpowering everything. Now for this particular shot, I am a bit bothered by the fact that the tree is too green. So I will actually adjust the tint, but not too much, to give a bit of purple onto the sky. Now this is actually purplish because this was already towards twilight. This was less than an hour away from the sunrise. So we were actually getting some light from the sun already and it was illuminating the clouds even from a tangential angle. And you can see that finding the, the right balance in terms of tint and color is going to give you, you know, just a more vibrant feel. Now I did not set the specific HSL features here, so I'm going to do it on the panel right here on the right side. And what I'm going to do is also tone down the purples just a bit, just so they're not overpowering everything. Now what I'm going to do is also adjust the green to kind of tone that down just a bit and perhaps lessen the saturation. But I still want that tree popping out. So we can fix the other colors. And now we have a, a bit of a more natural tone to the tree at least. Now, except for the fact that I desaturated the green. Maybe I did that a little too much. 
Now you would often hear this and in the previous video that I did about the tools that I use for night photography, there was actually a comment that says that clarity is one of the best tools for enhancing the night sky images. Well, for me, it's a bit of clarity and a bit of dehaze and also not overdoing either of them. So I want to increase dehaze just a bit and you can see that what it did is it enhanced the contrast in the blue sky against the bright little stars in there. And if we also increase clarity just a bit, then the stars are also going to be popping out a bit more. Now this isn't of course going to be my full editing, that's going to take a few hours, but maybe just a few more adjustments. What I would do is I want to give it a light vignette. And I do that manually with a radial gradient. Basically what I want to happen is for there to be more focus on the Milky Way and the tree and less on the foreground. So we want to invert this and decrease the exposure. Not by that much. <laughs> Perhaps just like this. So actually my common limitation for this one is don't go over three stops or if you use filters you would know that three stops is actually 0 0.9 so don't go beyond negative 0 0.9 so that it still looks a bit um, natural of course you want to give that emphasis but at the same time you want to make it look natural of course you want to avoid making the photo look like tunnel vision right and now i am seeing some halos over here just because that is actually the edge of the, the mountains with the night sky and so I want to add a linear gradient here and perhaps lessen the clarity and also the exposure not too much now the last thing I want to do is just do a tad bit of cleaning up and there's really not not so much to do in this one and basically I just want to make use of the pen for cleaning up so I'm going to use pot removal and my brush size is actually good for me or we can probably decrease that you can i think you can also set the the brush size here what we want to do is to actually take out this line and of course i know that that is probably a meteor that doesn't look like a plane but it also is going against the flow of the image. So I do have to prioritize the flow of the image. And lastly, I would like to clean this up because I don't really like having anything bright on the edge of the frame because that might be a distraction. And yeah, I think we're good. And there we go. Of course, the last part of that editing process would have been more smooth if we did that on Photoshop. And I do think that I have a lot of getting used to the controls, specifically with the dial. I think I have to customize it a bit more to everything that I use. But in general, I am intrigued by what this computer can do. Of course, this is capable of so much more complicated processes than merely Lightroom and Photoshop. And using the dial seems to be something that can really enhance your workflow as long as you customize it to how you should be using it. And of course, I love the fact that this pen is compatible to the trackpad. I've been wanting that on a laptop for so long. In any case, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And if you've gotten this far into the video, thank you for watching. Of course, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I am a landscape and architectural photographer, and this channel has content about landscape photography, architectural photography, general photography, and all the tech that I use in my workflow. Thanks for watching.